If you're planning to fly anywhere for the holiday season, you might want to book your flight now. At least two airlines, including Delta, are raising their prices. Delta is raising prices for one-way fares by $4 to $10. Airlines usually increase prices when oil prices rise, but with oil at an all-time low, this increase is attributed to airlines hoping demand for flights will be high during the holidays. If you're traveling over Thanksgiving break, here are five tips for booking your flight. CNN.com suggests that you book your flight now. The chances of you choosing your seat are much higher. Look into flying through alternate airports because fares are usually cheaper. Also consider flying on Thanksgiving Day. Airports are less crowded, but make sure your flight is early enough to make it to dinner on time. If you have, a, if you have to book a connecting flight, give yourself plenty of time for weather or other delays. And lastly, don't skip out on fees. Consider paying extra to make your trip a little more comfortable. Airline prices may be increasing, but gas prices are holding steady. We have where you can fill up for less in this week's Pump Patrol. The cheapest place in town for you to fill up is at the Shell on South Church Street. A tank of regular will cost $3.35 a gallon. Right across the street at the Sitgo, regular is $3.37. The Marathon and Kangaroo on Haggard are just slightly more expensive with regular at $3.38 and $3.39. We have perfect weather for homecoming and it looks like this fall temperatures are here to stay. Here's your Phoenix 5 day forecast. The weather will be fairly consistent for the next three days. Tuesday and Wednesday promise to be sunny with temperatures in the mid 70s. Thursday should also be in the mid 70s but there's a chance of isolated thunderstorms. Friday and Saturday will be sunny but temperatures will drop. The high for Friday is only 56 degrees and Saturday will be slightly warmer at 61. You have a few more days to finish your Halloween costume before the big night, but holiday attractions have been up and running for weeks. To tell us about one of these attractions, we have Katie O'Brien with us in the studio. Katie? Thanks, Jason. This weekend, I made the 30-minute trip to Spooky Woods in High Point, but unlike any other haunted house I've been to, I came out feeling a lot better than before I went in. If you're brave enough to make it into Spooky Woods, you're already doing better than some kids. But once you get into the park, that's where the fun begins. Well, it was it was very creepy. If you can make it through the first haunted house alive, then you have to travel through the woods to a castle filled with witches, ghosts, and the scariest, baby dolls. By the gripping in my thumb, something wicked this way come. At the end, you're led through the corn maze filled with zombie soldiers. For this Halloween, you don't have to be scared, because at Spooky Woods, you fight back. Y'all ready? Yeah. So we don't plan on being dinner. Please keep up with me. Here you kill the zombies that attack you. Or at least kill them in a game of laser tag. What's putting us above? Like Spooky Woods prides itself on being the innovative type. We want to be the leader in everything. This is the first Halloween laser tag attraction in North Carolina, and only the second in the country. And it's already getting attention from people of all ages. Well, I've seen like five and six year olds, I've seen 56, 76 year old people. And there seems to be a pretty common reaction. It was my first time and it was fun. Yeah, this is my second time, second day in a row. So I mean, it's extended our time, it's extended our stay out here, so I know it's definitely extended our customers that we've had. If you don't get scared, or if you're easily scared, <laughs> then this is so satisfying. Yeah, dead, right? I mean, if you get scared the whole way through before this, at least you got something to make you feel better about yourself when you drive home. That is, if you can make it back out to your car. <laughs> Next week, we'll celebrate Halloween by taking you inside another haunted Halloween attraction. It'll be a frightening time you won't want to miss. So, Katie, that looked awesome. Are you, are you, is it serious that right when it's over, you get to go fight these zombies? It's very true. You go through a series of haunted houses and a few mazes and such, and then at the end, you get to fight back. Their whole slogan is, fear fights back. So you get to go and kill the zombies that have been terrifying you the whole time. And I can tell you, I am scared of my own shadow. So <laughs> when I took this, I was terrified, but it was the most fun I've had. So you really felt much better about it afterwards. Right, definitely. Oh, that's great. Uh, if you missed the football game this weekend, we'll have all the highlights and lowlights of the game after the break. He knows how to swing a bat, but can he swing his hips? Sounds bizarre, but he's been practicing for a good cause. Stay tuned to find out more. The men's soccer team won a huge game against Wake Forest. It was the first time the Phoenix defeated the Deacons since 1979, and they were looking to carry that victorious momentum into Friday's game against Georgia Southern. Phoenix 14's Eric Halpern has the full story.
Elon's men's soccer team hosted the number two ranked SoCon team, Georgia Southern, Friday night. The Phoenix started off hot, netting an incredible bicycle kick from Matt Wesco 11 minutes into the game. The amazing shot was one of 10 for the Phoenix, who were outshot 14 to 10 on the night. The Eagles were able to tie the game in the 34th minute on a goal by Hunter Norton from Jose Vargas. Early in the second half, the Phoenix got the momentum back when Austin King put a header into net. The Phoenix were able to stay in control of the game and the lead for almost the whole half, but almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. The final five minutes got ugly, starting with a goal by Luigi Clendening in the 84th minute. The Eagles didn't wait long to soar. Just three minutes later, Ethan Lapon netted an 18-yard goal to put the Eagles on top. The Eagles kept the pressure on, and one minute later, Clendening struck again, this time scoring on his own to ice the victory. The Phoenix lost to the Eagles by a final score of 4-2. Eric Halperin, Phoenix 14 News. For many people, the football game is the highlight of homecoming weekend. But as Jamie Daphne reports, for the second year in a row, the Phoenix have failed to win the big game. Phoenix took the field Saturday for a homecoming matchup against the Chattanooga Monks. The Phoenix quickly found themselves behind partly due to sloppy passing by quarterback Thomas Wilson. Chattanooga quarterback Terrell Robinson was spot on and was able to connect with his receivers 11 out of 13 times for three touchdowns. In the second corner, Adam Schreiner's 36-yard field goal was the only scoring opportunity for the Phoenix who trailed the Monks by 25 at half. Wilson was able to connect with Jeremy Peterson for an 11-yard touchdown to give the Phoenix some life. Wilson's offense was able to march down the field quickly in the fourth quarter and only trailed the Mocs by 10 points with 10 minutes remaining. But the Mocs quickly pulled away again and managed to annihilate the Phoenix, 42-18. to Jamie Daphne, Phoenix 14. A long row of royalty lined the football field this weekend during the homecoming halftime show. Members from various organizations competed for the title of homecoming king and queen. The second runners-up were Taylor Martin, representing Kappa Delta, and Kelsey Thompson for Tri-Delta. Alex Dempsey for Tri-Delta and Elise Delmerico for the Isabella Cannon Center for Leadership were first runners-up. The Kings and Queens crown went to E.J. Young and Ashton Vicenti, both representing Alpha Omicron Pi. A few weeks ago, Phoenix 14 brought you the story of Little Pink Houses of Hope, an organization raising awareness and giving support to families affected by breast cancer. This weekend, the organization is using some of Elon's stars to, find, to raise money and awareness. Our Mallory Lane visited the dance studio to find out more. From the baseball field to the dance floor, Elon's head baseball coach Mike Kennedy is trading in his cleats for dancing shoes. You're the, you're the coach. Okay. That's going to be terrible. You know, I've had a few friends that have had uh, breast cancer, so I know the, uh, the trials that go along with that. So it's nice to be able to do something in some form or fashion to, to try to help. Coach Kennedy is one of seven stars from the community who will cha-cha their way to the floor this Saturday in Little Pink Houses of Hope's first annual Dancing with the Little Pink Stars fundraiser. Who will win? Well, that's up to you and the judges, of course. That's going to give us a prize right there. I know. <laughs> I'm not really into dancing a whole lot. I like to watch people dance, but I'm not real good at it. But, I mean, they told me what it was for. I couldn't say no. LittlePinkHousesOfHope.org is the site to visit to learn about the cast and donate money to your favorite team. So far, Coach Kennedy and his partner Megan have raised more than $1,000. It's amazing to me that, like Facebook, for example, there's so many people that I grew up with that have called or shot $10 here, $20 there, going, hey, that's pretty neat that you're doing that great call. The people I haven't heard from in years. So. Coach Kennedy says his baseball background and coaching mentality has helped him make the tough transition from field to ballroom. Well, I'm a perfectionist, and uh, I'm the same way with my team and our players and pretty much everything I do. I don't like to be bad. And I don't feel real good about being good, but it's, it's fun. I've had a great time. That's about all I got. Being athletic helps a little bit, but I haven't been athletic in 20 plus years. I'm, I'm getting old. For this team, practice makes perfect, and Coach Kennedy is ready to put on a good show. Mallory Lane, I love Phoenix 14 News. For more information, you can visit littlepinkhousesofhope.org. Mallory will be at the fundraiser on Saturday, and she'll have the results of the competition for you on next Monday's show. There are tons of reality shows of all kinds, but one show asks the question, is fear a factor for you? In December, you'll get a chance to find out when Fear Factor returns to television after a few years of five years of hiatus. Joe Rogan also returns to host the reality game show. Fans can expect the show to feature plenty of crazy stunts and weird bugs to eat when it returns. I'm excited. Are you excited? Uh, I'm 
actually not. I don't think I can handle people eating bugs. It's one of my all-time gross factors. <laughs> I know. It just, I don't know. It gets you going like watching a horror movie or something. It's like you can't believe they're doing that, but it's, it's kind of impressive at the same time. Yeah. I'm more of the adrenaline kind of fear, like, you know, dropping people from tall, tall high heights. So I think well, that would be both. cool. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's all the news we have for this week's Phoenix 14 News. For news throughout the week, follow us on Facebook and Twitter or check our website, www.phoenix14news.wordpress.com. I'm Jason Puckett. And I'm Maddie Haney. Have a great week, Elon.